Hey, welcome back. I am so excited to record this video for you. I've been a little bit off the grid out in the deep remote desert of California taking a few days off and um, finally decided to put on some makeup and blow up my hair and just like come back into society. Um, but I had a really great opportunity to do a lot of um, reflecting and meditating and you know connecting with mother earth is always just mind-blowing phenomenal way to adjust you know your thinking your emotions um, even your perspective on how life works and how we all function in the last video i was talking about edward Brene and uh, being um, Sigmund Freud's nephew and having studied how Sigmund Freud repatterned his patients in terms of their mental emotional state and then you know Brene took that information and he said hey we can do this with masses of people we can do this with large populations um, I can make money at this. Let me just go package this up and I'll sell this off to some of these advertisers and of these large corporations like General Electric and Procter Gamble and, and a lot of different governmental bodies and, you know, I'll just get super wealthy. And he did. I mean, he was the granddaddy of public relations where he understood how the human mind gets programmed through repetition using the sensory acuity of the observer so if you've studied pavlov's dog experiment i recommend you do that it explains how you create these sensory based associations between something you hear and something you smell or something you see and something you you hear you know we can or feel you know we can think listen to a song our favorite song from back in the day you know the one that we listened to the first time we fell in love for example and that can bring back this flood of loving fond happy memories or you know depending on how that relationship worked out for you it could bring back you know anger and resentment and grief and whatnot point being is that we make these sensory based associations and they create anchors in our nervous system in our neurons so remember hebb's law neurons that fire together bind together and wire together and when that happens essentially what's taking place is you're building up this um, uh, thought pattern and it starts to take on a life of its own and it and it just it functions within you because your neurons are wired together and they're firing together then all you need to do is like think a thought or allow yourself to feel a negative feeling for this example we're talking about negative feelings um and that can fire that whole pattern of pain and suffering without you even having any thought or mind of it and it just can take control of your entire reality you know your thoughts become things so it can take control of your entire reality and it does it absolutely does and this is what we've been experiencing for eons you know decades centuries thousands of years we as a collective as a, a mass amount of population we as a collective have been programmed for years to look at life a certain way because beliefs are just thoughts that you think over and over and over to the point where you defend it you know it's that's where that saying 
defending your limitations comes from. You actually defend that reality and through the defense of that reality, you, you end up holding onto it tighter and tighter. So where there are openings within your thinking, within your reality, within your lifestyle, where you could create entirely new, higher levels of experience by defending those limitations, by saying, see, I told you it's hard. I told you life is a struggle. I told you that business deal wasn't gonna work out. I told you you hired the wrong person. I told you you weren't gonna hit that really big number. And it doesn't have to come from outside of us where it's people saying those things to us. We do it to ourselves, hands down. You know, we might like to think that it's other people doing it to us because it's really, I, I think for most people, it's really challenging to get your head around the notion that you would actually hold yourself back. You know, the ego is so convincing and it could have us believing so easily that it's not us holding ourselves back. It's something out there that's doing it to us. And nothing can be further than that from the truth. The truth is, is that absolutely every experience that you have in your life is a projection you are you are like a movie projector and you're projecting your beliefs your thought patterns your neurological patterning that you've received and then perpetuated yourself throughout your entire existence and it, it can definitely goes past this lifetime you know we're an infinite being all of us so We'll talk about that more in another uh, video, but point being is that you're infinite. And so you never cease to be like you are forever. And in that forever process, you're projecting everything into physical form. Now, the cool side of that is that you're projecting into everything into physical form. So if you don't like what's showing up in physical form, then you can just change the projection. You know, it's like being at a movie theater and saying, I don't like that movie. And then the person running the projector takes that movie out and puts a different movie in and poof, you've got a completely different experience. Now, I know I make that sound really super easy and it probably isn't really quite that easy in real life. <laughs> <laughs> because patterns run super deep and we have to know how to wire in higher level vibrational patterns to be able to override those old negative limiting patterns of thinking and feeling and believing. And so it takes some personal growth work and some study and some investment, frankly, into yourself to learn how to do that. So you have to want to learn how to do that. Then the other flip side of the coin is that we project our entire reality through our thoughts. And if we don't like what we're seeing and we don't have enough of a curiosity or a desire to change it, then we convince ourselves, our ego, man, that ego, you gotta watch out for that ego. The ego comes in and says, you can't change it. It's just the way it is. Have you ever had someone say that to you, a parent or a teacher? You know, think back to when you were growing up and what were you taught about yourself? Because whatever you were taught about yourself is what you're struggling with as an adult, unless you've invested in yourself and you have learned how to change your patterns. Now, I used to be the kind of coach that I would teach people how to unwind these old patterns because that was the training I received that, you know, you clear these patterns out and then you replace them with positive. 
fast forward, because that's based on a concept of we are layers of an onion and you just keep peeling off all the layers and finally, you know, you peel off all the bad layers and finally you get down to this like golden nugget of amazing person. And it's so not true. So the new awareness is we're actually a nucleated sphere. Now you've heard me talk about this in previous videos. And I think it's worth visiting again because in that nucleated sphere, there is no end, which makes sense, right? If we're an infinite being and we go on forever and we never cease to be, then how could there be like this like finite thing, person, being within us that is just all good because we never cease to be, so we go on forever. And so there's no layers to peel off. In fact, don't even look at the bad stuff. Don't even give it a moment's attention. If you're dealing with um, some kind of negative experience, like a significantly emotional event that's got you tied up in knots emotionally, like grief, resentment, fear, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of fear in the world, it's a major trigger that companies use, uh, large corporations use, governments use, the media uses to slap you into submission. Because if you don't know that you're just being triggered, that they've layered in all of these programs of you not being enough, you're not tall enough, you're not short enough, you're not fat enough, you're not skinny enough, you're not smart enough, you're, you're too bold, you're too out there, you're too amazing, you're too strong, you're not submissive enough, you're not, you don't go for it enough, you know, enough, 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 like enough, right? So the thing is, is that all of those layers get put into us and it's not just through what they see to us, it's what they show us. You know, we all know that women have major body issues and we all know that these ideal women in ads with these certain shaped bodies have been photoshopped to death. And so, you know, you see women going out and having plastic surgery to make this bigger and that smaller. And, you know, it's just like this endless, endless loop where you can never measure up because along comes the next marketing campaign to tell you what's wrong with you now because the trends are constantly changing. So if, if you don't know this um, and you don't have the desire the curiosity to actually create your own reality and then you fall victim to this programming you're like this feather being tossed around in this 150 mile an hour tornado you know it's like you don't have a chance to ever feel good about yourself without jumping through hoops for someone to approve of you. And that is where a lot of masses are waking up from right now, is that they have felt like this for probably generations, you know? Like I said, if you look back on the way you were raised, kind of how I was raised and you know my parents didn't know any better I mean that's what they were taught that you submit you put people over you you know if they have a degree they're better than you if they make more money than you they're smarter than you if they live in a certain neighborhood or a certain house they're better than you and there was always this invisible box that we lived in that you could never get past the boundaries or the borders or the lines uh, that that box was. And you just had to accept that. And I always pushed the envelope. I didn't know how I was gonna get there. And, and I'm still not where I really want to be, I suppose, but I accept that you know we never get it all done and it's just this 
phenomenally endless journey and you just relax and enjoy the growth you know enjoy the 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 advancement so the thing is is that as humanity wakes up to the awareness and the understanding that if they just change their thoughts that what they're projecting will be different from from a belief standpoint from a thought process from a, a an emotional state which all of that just equals your vibration and then what gets reflected back is a completely different reality now some people are hesitant to do that because it could be scary i mean maybe your friends don't want to go there with you which means it could be really lonely for a while until you get yourself firmly into that new space and then the people that are already there see you and the people that are getting there see you and you have a new tribe so you have to be willing <laughs> big time to um to ride that out and to not judge it and to not make yourself wrong for it you know to to be willing to say yeah i can be my own best friend and i love myself and it's okay if the people around me don't understand me right now because there's a whole ton of people out there that get this journey that i'm on so you know i guess my advice if if i had any advice my thoughts for you right here right now is to question everything to to really look at at everything and and get to know yourself get to know your feelings and get to know your emotions because they're different right your emotions are something that come from within so we can choose to be happy or we can choose to be miserable we can choose to be sad or we can choose to be joyful it just is whatever you focus on so if you find yourself focusing on the good old days and you're feeling bad change your focus if you find yourself conversely focusing on the good old days and you're happy then take that and project it into the future and attract more happy the point is is that be conscious of what you're actually projecting because if you want things to change in your life you have to change things in your life you just have to change what you're putting out there in order for you to get a different result back and you see this is what the masses are coming into awareness on now and i liken it to so if you're wondering why there's so much anger and negative emotion and fear and fighting going on it's because for so long imagine a bear that's been hibernating for most of the year when they wake up they're hungry and they're cranky and they're like grumpy because they're having to wake up and look at themselves and go do something about their circumstances so they have to go find food like it's an immediate response mechanism and it's the same for people that are waking up now it's like they're pissed off because they're having to look at how long uh how many lifetimes how many generations maybe hundreds of years that we've held on to life being hard and life being a struggle and having these class caste systems and class systems and and all of these dividers that kept us separate from loving one another and none of that was ever true and that would piss off anybody you know when you start to look at it you have to scratch your head and go like who made this up and further how could i have possibly drank this Kool-Aid 
you know? So be really circumspect about what you read and take your own counsel, meditate a couple times a day, get out in nature as much as you can. If you live in a big city, get out of the city for a few days and just, you know, walk in the dirt with your bare feet and go hug a tree. I mean, I know that sounds kind of corny, but when you, um, when you connect with ma nature, it's just pure love and you'll hit the reset button. Your nervous system will calm down and you'll be able to come back into the city and get back to productivity, um, with a clear mind and an open heart. And then you can have more compassion for those that are just waking up and realizing that there never was a struggle. It's just something that was sold to us that life was a struggle. So we'd buy their products. So we'd buy their services. So we'd give them money. And that goes for every institution. And you all know what those institutions are. So if you want to grow your business, if you want to be healthy, if you want to be young and vibrant and happy and have beautiful relationships, then this is your starting point. So thank you for joining me. My name is Deborah Peters and I've got some more content coming for you over the next little while. So I'll see you real soon. Take care. Ciao.